Hi there. There has been a lot of confusing information in the news lately about the modes of transmission of the coronavirus. I therefore decided to make this short video to explain how the SARS-CoV-2, also called COVID-19 virus, can spread through the air, and not just in droplet form as we've been told, but also in finer mist and particles which are invisible to the eye. I made two videos. The first one focuses on what we know today about aerosol transmission, and the second video will help you understand the difference between different masks and help you choose the right one to protect yourself against the virus. For complete disclosure, I am not a medical doctor. I am a scientific expert and an engineer with over 25 years of experience with advanced nanoscale materials, fine particles and porous membranes, among other things. My goal here is really to help as many people as possible understand the scientific and technical information available and help you make an educated decision. I believe most will learn something useful here. So let's get started. On March 19, 2020, the WHO, the World Health Organization, wrote that the COVID-19 virus is transmitted between people through close contact and droplets, not by airborne transmission. However, on March 29, they uh, indicated that airborne transmission may be possible in specific circumstances and settings. Okay, so I would like to just uh, say that there are two confusing pieces of information here already. Uh, first, the virus is not called COVID-19. The name of the virus is actually SARS-CoV-2, okay, which is a new type of coronavirus, which is somewhat related to the SARS-CoV virus, which originated from Asia in 2003. COVID-19 is the disease caused by the virus. So to be clear, SARS-CoV-2 is a virus. COVID-19 is the name of the disease caused by the virus. Moreover, it is uh, interesting to know that the Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention has also confirmed that aerosols are a possible transmission pathway of SARS-CoV-2. And many medical doctors also believe that the virus can be transmitted through the air in aerosol form, and they recommend wearing masks for the general population as well. Now, if we look a bit more uh, in detail into the scientific literature. In a news article recently published in the scientific journal Nature, which is the most famous scientific journal, experts who work with airborne respiratory illnesses and aerosols say that there is no doubt that airborne transmission of the virus is to be expected. A study of People infected with influenza found that 39% of people exhaled infectious aerosols. As long as we breathe in the air around infected people, airborne transmission is possible. Moreover, the virus was found to remain in the air and stay infectious for at least three hours, which is a very long time. So if we look at more uh, recent scientific studies um, regarding this new SARS-CoV-2 virus, we see that in a recent letter published in February in the scientific journal Nature, again, the same journal, scientists who studied the virus said that the, the disease could be transmitted by airborne transmission. Virologist Keelan from Wuhan University in China collected and studied samples of aerosols from spaces around people infected with COVID-19. He also wrote that SARS-CoV-2 aerosol transmission might occur and impact people both near and far from the source. As a precaution, the general public should avoid crowds and should also wear masks to reduce the risk of airborne virus exposure. So uh, one question is, how does uh, this virus spread in the air? How far can the virus spread and what should we do to protect ourselves? So first, let's talk a, li a little more about um, the basic physics, uh, I would say, of particle transmission through the air. Um, so an aerosol is made up of particles of different sizes, which are suspended in the air. Okay. Typically, particles less than five microns 
which is roughly 10 times smaller than the diameter of a hair. Okay, so these particles of which are less than five microns will typically remain in the air for minutes and even hours depending on the conditions, depending on the temperature, humidity, wind conditions, etc. And I'm sure you've probably seen dust particles floating in the air through a ray of sunlight. Uh, you will see that these small particles uh, can float and stay in the air, suspended in the air for a very long time. Here we're talking about particles which are even smaller than that, which are very difficult to see with the, by the naked eye. So, and these particles tend to stay even longer. So um, the SARS-CoV-2 virus now is also a very small particle, even much smaller than that. It is approximately 100 nanometers in size. And I will show you this in a moment. I will show you a picture of the, the virus. 100 nanometers is very small. Uh, it is roughly a thousand times smaller than the diameter of your hair, okay? So tiny, you won't be able to see it by eye. Even uh, if you use an optical microscope, you won't be able to see it. You need to use uh, an electron microscope uh, in order to, to really um, observe these uh, viruses. Here, you can see an electron microscope image of the virus, and you can see it's roughly 100 nanometer in size. According to an article published in 2014 by Dr. Jones and Dr. Brosso, who are two experts on respiratory protection and infectious diseases at the University of Minnesota, nanoparticles such as viruses can stay airborne for a relatively long time. They will spread through the air over longer distances than larger particles and droplets. So in this illustration here, we um, we can start to see how this spreading and contamination can occur from one person to the next. If you take person A who is infected, when this person starts to uh, generate airborne particles and droplets, for example, by talking or coughing, these can be inhaled by person B who is in close proximity. At this time, at very short times, so we're talking about seconds here, person C who is farther away maybe several meters away, uh, does not perceive yet any contamination. However, because small particles remain airborne for longer times and can travel larger distances after a certain time, which can be uh, seconds to minutes, depending on the distance it has to be traveled, person C will start to be surrounded by, by these particles and will start to inhale them, okay? Microorganisms and viruses suspended in the air can be inhaled, deposited in the respiratory tract and infect cells. So that's what we know from two experts who have studied viruses and the way these viruses are transmitted through the air. Another example uh, of uh, studies of neurovirus, which is a different type of virus, but which is still of similar size, is capable to infect a person C more than three meters away from person A. In the case of particles which are the size of viruses, typically 50 to 200 nanometers, these tend to deposit in large majority in the alveolar region of the lungs. Both M. tuberculosis and influenza viruses are emitted in cough particles with a wide variety of diameters and recognized as causing infection subsequent to inhalation near and at some distance from the infectious person. And here uh, you can see a number of references which discuss airborne transmission of viruses. And uh, these are scientific papers you can uh, look at and read if, you, if you're interested. So what are the key takeaways from this? Viruses are not only transmitted through droplets clearly, when an infected person cough, which is what we often hear in the news. This is one mode of transmission, but that's not the only one. Viruses can also be transmitted over longer distances, at least three meters in the form of smaller airborne particles in an aerosol. Okay, and that's what we learn from specialists who have studied this for many years. Because viruses are small particles, okay, which range between um, 20 and 200 nanometers typically for most known viruses. And again, the, the 
the new coronavirus that we're discussing is roughly 100 nanometers. These viruses, because they are such small particles, have the potential to stay suspended in the air for long periods of time. As discussed earlier, scientists in the United States have shown in a laboratory setting that the virus can survive in an aerosol and remain infectious for at least three hours. Surgical mask, face shields uh, and goggles prevent the projection of microorganism laden particles, but do not prevent particle inhalation. So one question is, should you wear a mask to protect yourself or not? In some countries, people are asked to wear a mask when going outside in some European countries, for example, and probably in other parts of the world as well. One thing which is very important is that there is a huge difference between different masks and respirators. And uh, we've been seeing a lot of, we've been talking a lot about surgical mask, N95 mask, a little bit about half face respirators, full face respirators, etc. All of these are very different. They have different purposes. They were built for a different purpose and they don't protect against very small particles like the virus in the same way. So it's really important to understand this and to and to know which type of mask is the most efficient in, in if you want to protect yourself against this type of virus. So if you're interested in knowing more about the different types of masks now, uh, I invite you to look at my second video here on YouTube and uh, feel free to leave any constructive feedback and comments also below. I would be happy to know what you have to say and uh, I will try to answer some of these questions. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you all in the next video.